Hello everyone, I am Shari from Navigating Parenthood and I'm about to talk with Natalie about regaining energy after birth. And this is a huge one because I think we all feel pretty depleted. Um, you know, after having just the ordeal of the birth experience and the emotional work that goes into, um, you know, the transformation. Um, so Natalie, let me see if I can add you or if you can request to join. Let's see here. Natalie, can you request to join and then I can, hi, and I can add you. Yay. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Okay. Good morning, or I guess good afternoon. It's pretty much. Okay. There we go. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Navigating just some tech stuff over here. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel um, so it, I haven't done lives in a really long time, and then now I'm doing them for the fan summit. And so I'm feeling a little bit like, you know, when parents first started joining Facebook, like I'm feeling a little older. Like, we're <laughs> the lives, you know, I had to ask somebody. Um, because they moved the live option to, you have to go to stories and then go to live anyway. Um, so yeah, figuring things out again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yeah, I know. Um, I have zoom open too, but I'm assuming we don't need that one. No, that's, okay. I think so we had, we had scheduled these, um, IG lives, um, for the speakers and sponsors of the FAM Summit, which is an event covering pregnancy through the first five years of a little one's life, July 30th through August 1st. And um, my calendar automatically linked you to Zoom, but it's just on Instagram. And okay. um, so you are speaking at the summit about on day one, which is July 30th, about regaining energy after birth. Can you talk a little bit about that? It's... <laughs> I know I was just saying we all feel depleted yeah. after giving birth and even years later you tend to feel a little depleted. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. So this is something I learned probably about eight years into my 17 years of teaching Pilates. And then when that's about the point when I started working with women specifically um, gearing my Pilates toward pelvic floor rehabilitation, C-section and diastasis recti rehabilitation. And then I met a woman who was a flower essence practitioner and she was talking and she was also a doula. And so, and flower essences are homeopathic flower dilutions that work on an energetic and a cellular level. And most people are familiar with Bach remedies, rescue remedy that you can find at Whole Foods. Um, that seems to be the, you know, the go-to if people don't know what flower essences are. And so when she learned about the work that I was doing as a Pilates instructor, working specifically for post-baby rehab um, at any stage <clears throat> and age, um, she said, you know, this would be such a compliment to the work that you're doing because very little is talked about, what I found is very little is talked about um, as far as post-baby rehab goes, like physical need for that but even less so about the emotional and energetic needs. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, that coincided with my, a, a move I had where then I jumped into a Pilates, I mean, I'm sorry, a yoga studio and I was attending yoga five days a week. And I had this first week of just a complete release where I cried every day after my yoga class. And I would so much so that I would go up and hug my instructor. And I was like, this is wow wild what is going on and what I learned was the movement itself and the different movements that I was doing was releasing things that I had stored within my body you know things uh, that we store that we go through throughout life you know can be minor can be major and we store a lot of our negative emotions in our hips and so the flower essence therapy training in combination with the yoga practice I learned more about the energy systems in our bodies in our body and so um, you know, the most commonly, n the most common name for it is the chakra system. Or if you're familiar with acupuncture, you go to an acupuncture, she talks about the meridians in your body. So we have this subtle body, this energetic body that can be affected throughout our life. It's basically an imprint of what we experience. And of course, we all know as moms, what a major 
experience pregnancy and childbirth can be. And like the physical work, if we don't take, um, take it care of our emotional and energetic body, it starts to show up later on in life. And that can be physically, that can be in ways of feeling withdrawn, that can be in ways of feeling unmotivated, down, depressed, you know, you name it, there's a full gamut. And exhaustion. I mean, just like if you were to have a constant hip pain or neck pain or back pain in the back of your mind, it's there, whether you're, and you're trying to suppress it and ignore it because you have, you have a job to do as a mom, you have time to worry about this. That's exhausting. That's depleting. So same thing goes for a nagging, you know, traumatic event, or maybe it's not as traumatic, but it's still a depletion of energy. Um, and so that's the, that's where it all started. That's how I, I started learning about it and introducing it to um, my, my clients. I had a Pilates studio. I worked one-on-one -on -one with women, like I said, for post-baby rehab, and it could, they could be six weeks post postpartum, or they could be 30 years postpartum. It didn't matter because most women 30, 40, 50 years ago, definitely didn't have this information. We're not thinking about, yeah. you know, having, um, or rehabilitating any part of their body post baby. Can you talk a little bit about, so flower essence is something that um, I've seen mentioned before, mm -hmm. but is like not really known to me, but I know a lot of people know about things like um, doTERRA mm -hmm. and, you know, um, those types of things. Like how yeah. are, how is flower essence a little bit different than that? So doTERRA is a, is an essential oil company. Um, I believe it's a, you know, a multi-level marketing essential oil company. So the oil is the flower press to create that oil, your lavender oils. That's taking the flower, it's pressing it, it's in oil form. Now the flower essence is, it doesn't have any scent. It's, oh. it's the essence of a flower. It's the energetic component of a flower. So the way it's made is actually quite magical and simple and, and so simple you, you wouldn't believe that it would even do anything, but it's basically um, taking a flower, a specific flower. Um, one of my favorite flower essences is lemon balm. It's very good for grounding and getting into your body and feeling more calm. Um, it's taking a flower, having somewhat of a conversation first with the flower before you pick it. You can't just go out and like right. pick a flower. And then you put it within some water, some spring water, and you let it rest, whether under the sunlight or what under the moonlight. And it's basically, you know, for lack of a better word, boiling the essence of the flower into this water. And so I would make, as a flower essence therapist, I would make tinctures. And I would work, um, make tinctures specific to what you would need. So you and I would have a conversation, probably our first session would be 90 minutes. We talk about your health history, your, you know, just everything that's going on with you. Then we come down to what's going on in this particular moment that you want support from myself and the flower essence with, es essences with. We'd narrow it down. I want to feel more calm. I want to feel more in line with my body. I want to feel more, I want to be more clear, um, have more clarity, whatever it is. And then I make an, a tincture for you that would usually consist of four to five different flower essences to support those needs. And you would take the tincture sublingually, three drops, three times a day. Um, ideally, you would have a moment of, of quiet and peace at that time, whether it's five minutes or 10 minutes, try to really take it in and meditate, journal if you need to. And it's very subtle, has a very subtle effect. Um, I've had clients say, you know, I've noticed that my, I, I don't feel so irritable. Mm -hmm. um, my PNMS symptoms are not as, you know, have been lessened, wow. um, not as severe. Um, I'm more calm. I feel more peaceful, just subtle things. And, and it can be to the point where it's so subtle, you don't even notice. And someone will say, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll meet back again after 30 days. And I'll say, well, how do you feel? I don't know. I don't really feel anything. And so then we mm -hmm. kind of go over what we talked about. And then the, and then I've had women go, oh, yeah, no, I did know that I have noticed that. So, you know, sometimes we just don't notice so many things because we're so busy. We don't have time to pause to take it all in. But but when we you know, when someone asks questions and you actually take time to look back, then you realize, oh, yeah, there was a subtle shift. Oop, yeah, my holder. Very. Um, 
thought filled practice. Like you're saying, I, so for, I know it depends on the, on the person, I guess for some people are like, wait, you have to ask the flower for permission, but that actually um, goes with, you know, there are different principles when you're working with nature, like um, Tinker Garden, who will also be at the summit, you know, they talk about that as well, being mindful of nature and the earth we, you know, live on and, and understanding like, you, you know, this isn't all just for you to take from. So being mindful of your environment and very, you know, thought centered and thinking about, you know, this is a living object as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing this with me. Um, and then the, you know, the fact that you're having it like outside um, and thinking about the energies and being thoughtful. I think there are some people who are like, oh, that, that just sounds fake. And then there's other people who understand that energy yeah. is very connected and it's important to be thoughtful in that process. So this is very interesting to learn about. Um, and so when talking about postpartum specifically, does someone just they, they come to you and say, I've, I've just been feeling so wiped out. Um, do you, you do sort of like an intake with each person or do you have like a sort of postpartum tincture that you tend to um, say is best for people? I have, a, I have go-to flower essences that I go to for, you know, that I use initially for women on their first session because there are essences for helping you feel more grounded and getting back into your body. And that's where you want to start because then there's also essences for helping you release, release things, release things that are stored within your body, anything, you know, negative or traumatic. And you don't want to do any releasing until you've actually come into your body and you feel more grounded and safe. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I have several go-to essences that I'll use for that initial tincture. It's not necessarily the same exact ones for each person, but there are some repeats because um, I, I just love specific essences. And Typically, something along the lines of, you know, a flower essence therapy session, like you said, the initial session is really broad intake. And then 30 days um, is usually how long that first tincture lasts. And then um, if you want to, typically it's three sessions. That's what I suggest. And so the second session will kind of review what we talked about before. Um, it's kind of like peeling an onion. So maybe something else comes up and, so, you know, I've heard a lot of women say, oh, I haven't thought about this in a very long time or, you know, so then we talk about that and then I'll create a, another tincture for them based on what we talked about and what they want support with. And it's a process. Like I said, you want to have quiet time with it. You want to meditate. You want to journal um, while you're taking the essences. It's just a couple of minutes. It's not major and then I'm always available for support to via email if there's questions that come up. Um, but it's good to take note. Like I said, the, the shifts are so subtle, you may not realize them. So it's right. always good to be mindful and take note. And then the third session is just going a little bit deeper into that. I mean, and you can continue to go on. Um, it just depends on what you're going through. Um, Irving out a few minutes of every day just to breathe and mm -hmm you know, take a second to even if it's just writing down like two words, um, I think is super helpful for anyone in general. So I yeah. think adding that piece to this um, is very important in postpartum. And for yeah. any, you know, anytime when you're maybe stressed out, it's yeah. a great tip. Absolutely. It, it, and I've found that when I do that, when I take time in the morning to be mindful things just kind of align a little bit better and mm -hmm. things are a little bit more calm as opposed to, you know, yeah. just taking off, you know, flying out of bed and just running into the day. Um, things usually go awry in that scenario. If you, you know, tend to go more awry than if you were to be more mindful. Yeah. If you didn't have a grounded mindset that you started from. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> visitors. <laughs> yes. You know, I wanted to mention, so you talked about being depleted and how we feel so depleted after pregnancy and birth. And there's a couple of, um, there's a book I talked about and some things I've learned about that, you know, because we are creating a human within our body, we are absolutely depleted in every sense in every way. And um, I don't know if you've heard of, there's a doctor in, I want to say, New Zealand, and he wrote a book called The Depletion Cure. 
yes, I have the postpartum depletion cure. Yes. Reading it is another story. Because- yeah. Yeah. And I haven't fully read it, but I've, I've read ex, you know, parts of it and I've listened to him talk about it and it, it just makes so much sense. And it's almost like, you know, in an ideal world, this is not something I did because everything I know happened, uh, what, 10 years after I had kids, I have twins now who are almost 19 and my youngest turn, turn, just turned 17. So all of this stuff was not at my disposable disposal when I was pregnant, but in an ideal world, we're prepping our body for the pregnancy because we know we're going to be depleted. And then afterwards, we have all the tools and things to refill us back up afterwards. And when we are depleted, you know, we can't do a whole lot. When, when we're exhausted, it's, we, we, we want to give more than we can. Um, and yeah, we just, we just, we need to replenish our body so that yeah. we can have our brains back and have our bodies back and energized and not back in the sense like we want to fit into our je- favorite jeans again, but back like we feel connected. It could be something like, um, for me, I know that I need to use like magnesium spray sometimes. A lot of us are magnesium deficient and that helps me. I've had perinatal mood anxiety disorders before with pregnancies and magnesium and like connect, you know, going out for a walk, being in fresh air, getting sunlight, very important for me. Um, and you know, as your get your kids get older and you're like, I'm just exhausted having that nap, like they're finally napping and you're cuddling with them. My kids are all super attached, high needs attached, like co-sleeping with me. So that's my re like re-energizing time. Okay. You were just having a meltdown and I'm, I'm feeling at my edge, you know, but yeah. then we're cuddling. Okay. That's the perfect reset. You know, sometimes it can be something like that and you feel mm-hmm. re-energized. Yeah. It, it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like you said, the depletion, mineral, nutrient, energy, all of these things are, you know, stacked on top of each other and can be factors to things like the mood disorders that we experience afterwards too. You know, it's definitely a factor um, in that piece. And then some, from for some people. Um, and then going back to the energetics piece, another one of my favorite books is written by Carolyn Miss, um, M-Y-S-S, called The Anatomy of Spirit. Oh, okay. I haven't heard and, that one. Yeah. And she, my favorite part of the book, I mean, she talks about the energy systems and I think she lists like five or six different names for them. Wow. Um, You know, chakras and meridians being one of them, but then I think there's several others and she has a diagram in there and she lists each chakra. There's seven of them starting from your tailbone to the crown of your head. And each one is associated with, let's say the root. I always talked about the first, second, and third chakras with my clients because the typically the areas we're working with because we're the first uh, chakra is at your tailbone. The second one is within your pelvic bowl. And then the third one is right above your belly button, your power center. And so what she talks about is how the, the root chakra at your tailbone is associated with your sense of safety, your sense of security, your finances, your sense of passion. And so that can be, you know, rattled for lack of a better word during pregnancy and childbirth because we're going through a lot down there and (laughs) then you're in your pelvic bowl is your sacral chakra your second chakra which has to do with your sense of self-worth your creativity uh your relationships um i feel like there's more but i'm forgetting and so that we experience after you know we experience a lack of each of those potential most mostly after having kids and then our, cent- our power center is our third, which when the other two aren't working, the power center is not working. So those energy systems need to be flowing and can be um, stagnant or, you know, cut off during pregnancy or delivery and even C-section because we we're, we're thinking, you know, if you think about scar tissue and adhesions and such um, things like that. But then she goes on to talk about how it can show up physically if those areas aren't um, those energy systems aren't moving. So, um, and, and if it, you know, if it's, you know, your stability center is blocked, your core is blocked. If you're, um, like 
I don't know about most people, but for me, you know, there's a baby there. So I'm like, I don't feel my core or its existence for a very long time. And then when I'm holding baby in my arms, it's like, oh, wait, where is that again? You have to find it again. Yeah. Really lost connectivity with your own self a lot, you know, not just because you're going through the mental transformation of, oh, this is who I am now. I am now a mom or now I'm a mom of this many kids. Um, or, you know, all that, but you're also going through like, oh, how do I, <laughs> who is Reconnect. this? Reconnect. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I always have this image too. I had two C-sections, so I had a lot of work to do to reconnect to my, my core. Um, and I also spent two months on bed rest with my twin daughters. So after being relatively active as a dancer and then spending two months on bed rest, my body was completely atrophied. So I was introduced to Pilates at that time. And that was what saved me and my body and my sanity, because not only did the movement heal my body and the strengthening of my core, you know, healed my, my abs. Um, but it was a mental thing too. The movement gets the energy flowing and keeps you mentally stable um, as you're doing it. Cause my, Pilates itself is a mindful practice a very mindful practice you can, definitely can't check out while you're doing it but I always have this image of someone who's going through going through a vaginal delivery just really having to check out you know almost kind of leave the body in a way to get through that experience that's probably I mean it doesn't necessarily have to be everyone but I feel like it can be so intense that you're kind of like I'm out of here I don't know what's going on anymore it's gonna happen but I'm out I, well, I know with my births, it's always felt like I'm I'm present and this is taking a while, you know, maybe, um, or like I had one birth that was really quick and it was like I was just focusing on my getting through each breath, getting through mm -hmm. each wave or each second. And I did hypno babies with that one. And so for that, it was focusing on this bubble that was peaceful and trying to keep in my peaceful moment. And the next thing you know, it's done and it happens so quick. So it's like, you feel like you did miss a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a question about, would you recommend this type of therapy in conjunction um, with, or when going through therapy, like maybe seeing a therapist is what I think. Oh, yeah, totally. Because um, you could, with it, you know, say you are going through flower essence there, you're taking your essences and something might come up and, depending on what it is, you know, everyone's more than welcome to contact me and we can talk it through, but a therapist is even better some, you know, in some cases to go in and go, this came up. I haven't thought about this in a while. It's making me feel this way. You know, a lot of the time you can feel it in your body too, whatever's going on. Um, so absolutely. If you're going to talk therapy, you can definitely go in and talk it out and see, you know, what's coming up because sometimes something might come up and you just aren't aware of it. Um, you know, maybe it's happened before where someone's taken a dance class or any type of movement and all of a sudden they're just in tears and they don't understand because they've hit a part of the body or they've, they've activated or moved a certain part of the body where a memory is stored or a, an experience is stored. Another great book I have not completely read yet, but heard great things about is called um, uh, the body keeps the score. Oh, Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think that was going, that's yeah. also an interesting topic because so you are speaking at FAM Summit about all this regaining energy. And we also have Dr. Kate Wan, who is a chiropractor who will be talking about trauma and birth trauma and how your body holds on to all of this. So this mm -hmm. is they both go really like hand in hand. And so it's really interesting hearing that um, because, you know, you're in a sort of adjacent field but it it's really saying the same thing and it pairing well saying yes your body's holding on to this um yeah. physical things can lead to mental emotional things mental emotional things can lead to physical things you really need to work on your whole self and take care of yourself um make space for you know, make time for that yeah absolutely yeah. i love chiropractic care too for mamas pre you know during pregnancy and after especially if they're wanting to realign their pelvis because they can go in, you know, a lot of people think that chiropractic care is just like to heal back pain or something, but there's so much more yeah. to it. If they're um, like, she's trained with the Webster method, um, uh -huh. 
specific woman. And then there's some other, I want to say it's Mercer or some other like very special training to work with babies and work with trauma and all of that. Um, yeah. My first Pilates studio was within a chiropractic's, chiropractor's office. It was attached, but separate. And he was also a Webster oh. trained. And so we were a good team because, you know, whether it was baby trauma or mama was having trauma, um, he would align them and work with them. And then I would keep them aligned by strengthening their hips and keeping things stable. And so, or vice versa, if there was something else going on, I would, I would send them to him, but it was such a great combination. Wow. That's a good, yeah, that's a good partnership. Mm -hmm. um, and so she said, thank you for answering about the mental health therapist. I would say though, make sure if it's something related to pregnancy or postpartum that they're trained because unfortunately a lot of therapists are not trained and then they can make you feel worse because they don't say the right things or know like how to help you. Um, so definitely find someone who's trained to yeah. specifically help you if that's the area, the reason you're going. I, and I feel to that point, I kind of feel the same way as far as, uh, you know, chiropractic care and Pilates and such if mm -hmm. you're needing or physical therapy even because they, yeah, like you said, they're not trained, they don't get it. And they feel like a lot of, you know, post baby mood stuff or, whatever's going on is kind of dismissed as this just part of the territory. Oh, you'll get over it. Oh, mm -hmm. it, you know, and it's the same thing in the physical world, the physical body uh, world is, you know, if you're experiencing bladder leakage, you had three kids, it's just part of the territory or, yeah. you know, your back aches and it's, and it ticks me off so much. Or if you have a diastasis recta, you know, if you have a separation, um, you know, well, that's part of pregnancy. Right. And that's, um, that's something that's common being turned into something that's normal, but, um, some great, I don't know who originally said this, but, oh, I think it was when I took the lactation educator training. Um, the instructor was like, there's a difference between common and normal. There are a lot of things that are common, but it's not normal, you know, yeah. so you need to be sure people are aware that this is common. You're not alone but it shouldn't be happening. Let's try to make it better for you. And yeah. I think it's really important that the person you, that you reach out to, the resource that you have is trained for you and what you are going through that's common for your situation, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That makes such a huge difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Is there, I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Um, I'm always available through DM too, if anyone has questions, but I'm looking forward to sharing this information um, at the fam summit. And I think that the whole idea and this, yes, I love your t-shirt. <laughs> it's such a, um, it's such a great resource. And, and I, and I was thinking too, just for that reason, just finding people who do specialize in all of these areas for post post baby rehab and I yeah. and postpartum to me is longer term than six weeks but not many people see it that way and so yeah. I always say post baby because it's kind of any that's any a great point. way to say it. I, I feel like you have it's almost like a ticking time bomb in the first like three months or so where it's like that's the prime time to really help yourself in recovery but yeah. you're always postpartum and definitely for at least a year you know it took almost a year for this baby to be earth side so obviously it's going to take your body at least a year or more to you know go through the emotions of yeah your changing and if you're nursing it's even longer because then you're still nursing your hormones are still all over the place from nursing yeah um, a loss um mm -hmm. you're still postpartum you still had that baby um, and now you're going through the motions of postpartum. Um, and I think we're all starting to recognize that a little bit more now, which is good, but, um, yeah, well, yeah, and in that book, the postpartum depletion cure, he says it could take up to 10 years to come oh. back. And if you have multiple children, you know, without prepping in between or mm -hmm. re nourishing yourself in between, who, you know, could take longer. And this is all based off of watching his wife go through it after how I forget how many kids she had, two or three, maybe. I have to look more. 
I have heard that, um, you know, it's recommended to space at least two years to allow your body to replenish minerals because it is depleting to have a baby. Mm -hmm. um, not just like, oh, I feel tired, but if you don't have the right amount of calcium or minerals in your body, you know, if you're not getting enough, the baby, it automatically takes, you know, all of the nutrients they need from your body, from your bones. So if you're not having enough in your diet, yeah, then the baby's taking it and you're left with even less than you had before pregnancy. <laughs> they might be left with less than they should have because you didn't have enough stores, you know? Yeah. That's one thing I learned because I had dental issues with my first kids. And then I was like, oh, okay, I have to take calcium with D3 to make sure that calcium sticks. Oh. And I, and, and that's important to me in my prenatal um, regimen, because I've learned that, you know, you really need to have all the minerals in place. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's why. And that's what I was saying earlier, in an ideal world, we'd really just prep you know, yeah. to be mindful of it. And I, I, I didn't, I wasn't mindful or even have any idea to be mindful and, and, and prep my body for, you know, having twins um, or having another one 19 months no. later. I feel like there's very little, um, like, trying to conceive classes, I guess you would say, unless you're someone who's had fertility issues mm -hmm. and then it's more classes about here are the shots you need to take and the things you need to do. And then maybe here's your very specific diet. But for someone who isn't going through fertility issues, there aren't classes that tell us like, Hey, if you, you know, I feel like this should be in high school or something, you know, here's what you need to know. It's not, not just the sex aspect of childbirth, you know, and how that makes baby, but mm -hmm this is how it affects your body. And these are some things you need to prepare your body for to make sure that you're healthy and make sure the baby's healthy too. And, you know, because um, I think everything has a long-term effect and we're, we're just studying it a little bit more now. It's crazy how every yeah. little thing you do. And um, there's like a study about how, the grandparents' health and their diet affects your baby and how all that's predetermined. It's just so interesting. Um, all the mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it's all coming out now and we're like, what? And how are we even living? I know. <laughs> <laughs> how are we even functioning if that's the case? I know. It's a lot. Anyway, we went on a tangent, but it was a real <laughs> Natalie. And I look forward to your talk. Thank um, you. Thanks for having me. You're um, at the FAM Summit, and I hope you have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. You too. Bye. Bye.